I'm Nick Angler, author of Woodworking Wisdom and a few other woodworking books. And I'm going to show you a few professional secrets, tips and techniques that will improve the ease and accuracy of your table sawing operations. You've got to cross cut a board to a specific length. So first of all, you measure that length. In this case, I'm just going to measure 12 inches. Make a mark at 12. And then I always like to take a square and extend that mark at least an inch or two so I can make sure that the uh, cut is following the line. Now, how do you line up your mark with the saw blade? Well, you can eyeball it and hope you're on uh, right on the money and you almost never are. Some people like to, to uh, move the uh, wood a little past the cut and then creep up on it making successive cuts until they finally get where they're uh, where they're going. But there's a much simpler way. You can simply take your square, put it right on your mark, and then move the wood until it just touches the tooth of the blade. There we go. We're lined up to make the cut. Like I said, right on the money. Okay, how do you know that the cuts you make are perfectly square and that your miter gauge is set to a perfect 90 degrees? Well, <clears throat> you can uh, use a square, of course, and a fence, as long as the fence is parallel to the blade, you can use a square to check that your miter gauge is a square to your fence. So that's pretty close, but it's not precision. To absolutely be sure, take a scrap of wood. We're going to make an X somewhere in the middle of that scrap, and we're going to cut through the X. Okay. Now we're going to take this scrap and we're going to put it against the fence, which we know is perfectly straight. Okay? Now that goes together pretty darn good, but if I flip it, it should also go together. Up, oh, there's a gap. There's a small gap right there against the edge that's against the fence, at the face. Okay? If that happens, I've got to move my miter gauge counterclockwise, just a hair. Now that should be square. If the gap had been on the other side, away from the fence, I would have had to move the miter gauge clockwise. Let's try this once, one more time and see if I've corrected the problem. There you go. Perfect. When you're ripping a piece of wood and uh, the wood hasn't been properly dried or sometimes it's just the wood itself, the kerf, the cut left by the blade, will begin to close behind the blade and pinch the blade. This is due to what is called reaction wood. There are tensions in the wood that uh, cause the wood to distort as you relieve it by cutting it. Now, if, the, if you don't have a splitter and uh, uh, this is a problem for you, you can keep a few wedges handy and put those in the cut uh, behind the blade. I'll show you. Just start the cut, let the blade come to a full stop, put the wedge in, there we go, Don't wanna. there we go.
That's it. Every now and then, you may have to cut a piece of plastic on your table saw. And it's very unlikely that you'll be keeping a plastic blade around because it's so infrequent. Uh, but don't worry, you can make a good cut in plastic with a plywood blade or something with a lot of teeth. Just turn the blade around so the teeth are facing backwards. This helps clear the gullets so you don't, they don't get filled up with plastic shavings and begin to melt, making a, a burned, crispy cut. Here, I'll show you. I've got a plywood blade on here, and as you can see, the teeth are facing away from the direction of the cut. Now, we had a little melting going on. You can see that the, these pieces have, uh, have fused, but the cut itself is real clean. You want to make a bevel rip, and it's got to be precise, very accurate. That means you have to tilt the saw blade to a precise angle. Now, the old way to do this was to use a sliding T-bevel, and a protractor. Now let's say that we want to tilt this to uh, tilt at 22 and a half degrees. The blade is actually set at 90 degrees, so 22 and a half from uh, 90 is 67 and a half. So we set the protractor to 67 and a half degrees, and we take the sliding T-bevel, and we set that to the same angle. Now we're going to tilt the saw blade until the edge of the sliding T-bevel touches the blade all along the face. And right there is pretty good. Okay, that's not a bad way to do it, but you can get a lot more accurate if you have an inclinometer, okay? These measure, these measure the angle digitally, and they'll measure to a tenth of a degree. Now we're going to take this, got it turned on here, and we're going to zero this out, first of all. Now I've got it turned away from me, so I'm going to have to ask my buddy Travis to see if that is on 0.0. .0. Is, okay, all right. He, he says, I got it. Now I'm going to put this on the blade, and what am I reading right now? 60, 67.6. 67.6, so I'm a tenth of a degree off, okay? That may not seem uh, like, a, like a lot, but if we were making an octagon, which, uh, which uh, has mitered angles of 22 and a half degrees all the way around, that's eight angles, and by the time we get to the last angle, we'd be almost an eighth of a, uh, we, we'd be, 0.8 degrees off, almost a, an entire degree off, enough to show a gap. So we're going to, um, uh, let's see, I'm going to turn this just a little bit and try to get to 67 and a half. Tell me if I'm, go if I'm going in the right direction. Is that the right direction or the wrong direction? Wrong direction. Wrong direction. Okay, let's go back. Tell me. Good. Right there. Okay, 67 and a half degrees. Precisely. You can also use this inclinometer to uh, set the miter gauge precisely if you want to. Just take the miter gauge itself, and you'll notice I have an extension on it. Clamp the extension to the saw table. There we go. Now we'll take the inclinometer, we'll zero this out, yep, it's already at zero, and then we stick it to the miter gauge, and it should read 90, and it comes awfully close. Now, 
we're going to angle the miter gauge and let's do uh, 67 and a half degrees like we did with the blade angle or okay that's what 66.4 come back a little bit 67.3.4 what is it when I turn, tighten it down? 67.4, oh, there we go, 67.5. So now, when I cut with this, I'll be making a 22 and a half degree angle. 